S. Mueller 26 wants to know, would you go 4S or 6S for a 3-inch freestyle build? Um, for 3-inch, I would stay with 4S. I don't believe that there is much of any advantage to 6S on a 3-inch quad. And uh, part of the reason for that is, let's think about, like, for a 3S, you might have a 650 to 850 milliamp hour 4S battery. Maybe as much as 1,000 milliamp hours. Um... So if you were to go to a 6S battery of the same watt hours or the same weight, we take, uh, let's, let's take an 850 4S and multiply it by 0.66. That gives us about a 560 milliamp hour 6S. As you get below about a thousand milliamp hours, the quality of the cells gets significantly worse. Think about how crappy like a 300 milliamp hour uh, tiny whip battery usually is. It just, and I don't know why this is, but it seems like it's very hard to manufacture good quality small batteries. So for a, for a 4S, you're going to be at about 850 and maybe 1,000 milliamp hours, and you can get decent quality cells. But if you were to go to a 6S, you would be doing 500 to 550 milliamp hour cells, and they're just going to be much worse. In my experience, they're worse quality. In addition, the advantages of the higher voltage really come into play when you have larger motors. The bigger the motors, the heavier the quad, the more heat buildup there is in the motors, the more advantage there is to increasing voltage. So the idea that 6S is better than 4S is only true because 5-inch motors are in the, the gray area where the additional voltage becomes beneficial. When you go from 6S to 8S on a 5-inch quad, there's definitely a difference, but it's like not as compelling you're, 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 unless you're trying to do like top speed runs in a straight line for typical flight, it's not that compelling. But if you're going up to something like a seven inch or an eight inch or a 10 inch, now suddenly you've got bigger motors, bigger props, and the higher voltage starts to become beneficial. So I don't know exactly like where the line is, but for any given motor and prop size, there is sort of an ideal voltage range that makes sense for that motor and prop size. And when you're down in the three inch props, 4S is plenty. There's really not a reason to go with 6S in my humble opinion. And a few other people's opinion as well. Kermit FPV wants to know, all of my drones flip about 50% slower to the right than to the left. I'm using the Pyrodrone gimbals, uh, presumably the Tango 2 gimbals, yeah. Uh, one of the magnets had fallen out. I reattached it with double-sided tape. Anyone have any idea? Well, uh, <laughs> yeah, so um, what I would do is I would first check your endpoints, right? In the Betaflight receiver tab, make sure that your channel is going equally to the left and the right. Chances are it's not. You may need to recalibrate the gimbals in the Tango 2. You may need to redo the calibration procedure. Even if the magnet has moved or something, the calibration should take that into account. Okay? So my first my first suggestion, Kermit, would be to recalibrate the gimbals in the Tango 2. And look at the Tango 2 screen when you move the gimbal. Make sure the gimbal goes all the way to the left and all the way to the right. If the Tango 2 doesn't show the gimbal going all the way to the left and all the way to the right, then, you're, then something isn't right and you got to fix that. After that, go to the Betaflight Receiver tab and check that the channel goes 1,000 to 2,000. And if that's not happening again, it's not going to work for you. Those are the two things you need to do. Uh, we got a question here. Thank you for a $5 Super Chat. I'm looking for a tiny drone for my first drone. Considering the Fly Flywoo Firefly 1S HD0 or the Mope 7 HD0. Um... Indoor and outdoor. Um, I would take the Mob 7 for indoor because it has prop guards, and prop guards are good for an indoor drone because you're going to bounce off the walls a lot. Prop guards keep you from being damaged when you crash. They protect your props, and they protect your walls from getting all marked up and pissing off your, your, your significant other or yourself if you're the kind of person who cares about that. The, Fire, the Flywoo Firefly 1S is amazing. But it's, to me, it's more of an outdoor flyer. 
you can fly it indoors, especially if you're a very good pilot, but I think there you're gonna it's gonna crash worse in terms of damage to itself and damage to your apartment. Thank you for five Canadian dollars from IED. When I set to 3D mode, do I arm with the stick in the middle? Yes. Tried to take off in 3D mode and it did a flip on the spot. That means your motors are spinning the wrong direction. Um, IED, you have to enable bi-directional in BL Heli. It, what I'm guessing you did is you set beta flight to 3D mode, but you didn't tell the ESC that you wanted the ESC to be in 3 mode, 3D mode. You have to make those changes in both places. So you're going to go uh, into beta flight and enable 3D mode, but also you're going to go into BL Heli and you're going to set BL Heli to bi-directional or bi-directional reversed. Um, if it flipped on the spot, your motors are spinning the wrong direction. I had, I knew that was going to happen. I freaking knew that was going to happen. I put these freaking sound panels up and they're falling off my freaking wall. So dumb. You can't see it on camera, but I heard it. So dumb. Jason Natowski, thank you for your $10. Want to come to Virginia and help me look for my lost brand new JB QAVS? Oh my God. Jason bought and built a QAVS and uh, lost video while he was flying and uh, flew it into the woods and lost it forever. So what, what lessons should we learn from this? Well, first of all, my sympathies to you, Jason. But but what, what can we constructively take from this uh, for future, uh, for the future? Uh, number one, if you are a beginner and you lose video, disarm immediately. You'll see experienced pilots who will like lose video and they'll lift up their goggles and they'll fly it line of sight and they'll fly it back home. Or they'll lose video and they'll kind of like level it out and raise throttle to try and climb and get video back. You'll see experienced pilots basically try to use the force to fly the quad without being able to see what it's doing. That's a pro move. And as a beginner, if you lose video, you just disarm and dump it. Number two, always fly the drone somewhere where if you disarm and dump it, it will fall in a place where you can recover it. Don't fly it over the woods, right? Because then when you disarm and dump it, it'll be lost forever. Don't fly it over a lake. Fly it in a big open area where if you have to disarm, it will fall on the ground and you'll get it back. Uh, number three, have, uh, this is optional, but having a self-powered buzzer on the drone means that if you eject your battery, it will just sit there and go beep, 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 and help you find it. That's worth, worth doing. Uh, and number four, spend more time in the simulator, getting comfortable with what's going on. Uh, those are some pieces of advice. Um, warm freeze. Thank you for a $10 super chat. Is it me or is it really hard to find mid upper range $400 analog goggles right now? Um, I think the analog goggle market, especially the used goggle market is not as robust as it once was. These days, there are new goggles in the $600 price range and there's budget goggles in the $100 to $150 price range and not much in between. So I don't think it's just you. Uh, S. Wiseman, thank you for a $5 super chat. Any recommendations to successfully repair a flight controller with a missing pad by scraping to the trace? AIO broke off the IPEX and took the pin pad. Um, dude, if it were any other pin than the UFL connector, I'd say go for it. But to be honest with you, like 5.8 gigahertz microwave signals are so sensitive anyway. I know people have done this repair successfully. I know, but like to me, that's that's a it's gone. Like I wouldn't try and scrape back the trace and solder on an antenna, a 5.8 gigahertz antenna. To me, that's that's gone. It's just broken, and probably just needs to be replaced. 